and Dr. Tucker Slingerland, the CEO of Hudson Headwaters Health Network, joins us now. Welcome, it's nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. Your network now consists of 19 community-based health centers across the northeastern corner of the Adirondacks, located primarily in rural communities and towns. And that's been the idea, really, for you folks. Uh, your mission for 50 years now is to provide people living in rural communities with access to quality health care. Yeah, that's very true. We, uh, our origins are really in small towns, uh, mostly in the Adirondacks. Uh, Chestertown was our, our um, origin, first, first health center, Dr. Ruggie uh, uh, practiced there. That uh, led to many other health centers, some that are small, like uh, Indian Lake, um, and some that have gotten a lot larger, like the work we're doing in Plattsburgh and Champlain. And, uh, and, and some of the communities, we like to think of them as communities that are uh, in the park and the surrounding communities. Yeah, we try to go where the people are and, and uh, meet their needs where they live as much as possible, and, and that's been a good model for us. And your focus is primarily primary care. Yeah, we, we are um, absolutely focused on primary care. We define it pretty broadly. So many of our providers are family physicians, um, but we also have internists, and we certainly have pediatricians. Uh, we have some OBGYN providers and some other specialists like uh, rheumatology and endocrinology, um, and we do a lot of women's health. So we uh, define primary care pretty broadly, but um, you know, even includes things like behavioral health, and um, we have a whole group of people who do care management, uh, with many of whom are social workers that help patients with problems that extend far beyond the examining room. And is the idea that if it's convenient for patients and they can come and have all of us under the same roof, that they're more likely to follow through on on managing their health care. Yeah, exactly. We, we absolutely believe in preventative care as much as possible. We're trying to get ahead of illnesses and conditions that we can prevent, for sure. Um, so a lot of our health centers uh, really build a, a close relationship with, with, with patients over many, many years, and they're extended families. And when you mention preventative care, uh, about a dozen years ago, 10, 12 years ago, there was a pilot program here in the Adirondacks, Adirondack Medical Home, that really stressed preventative care, bringing in all kinds of partners together, uh, providers, doctors, hospitals, insurance providers, to try to focus on preventative care, thinking that if you can start early and tackle issues early on, then you save, you, you not only yeah. help the patient, yeah. but down the road you save money, you save them from ending up yeah. in the emergency room with a chronic illness. Um, as a family physician, I. I um, see patients and, and, and definitely realize that uh, to have a real lasting impact for, for patients and communities, you really have to have a lot of partners. And the medical home was a great forum for that. It brought together the insurance companies, um, representatives, um, but also the leadership from, from hospitals and other medical groups, uh, specialty providers. Um, and, and we really began to build relationships that extended far beyond um, our day-to-day -day work at that time. So now we um, are essentially working towards what we call an integrated delivery system. So we um, really try to identify the needs of a community and then work with our partners of um, great variety to sort of figure out who can do what and, and, and how to really make sure that um, patients continue to have access to good good services. And is that what we're seeing now? Your, your campus in Ticonderoga, yeah. is that a perfect example of that? Elizabethtown Community Hospital, the uh, University of Vermont Health Network operates the hospital. Correct. Uh, you folks are building a new health center. You have, you've had one yeah. in Ticonderoga for a, a long, few, time. A long yeah. time now, a yeah. number of decades, but you're moving it over so it's part of that campus Correct. And, and working in partnership uh, with, the, with the other healthcare providers. Yeah, so we've actually done this with a number of providers. Hudson Handwars has worked really closely with the leadership at Elizabethtown Community Hospital, their board, and by extension the University of Vermont Health Network uh, to uh, relocate our, our practice uh, that's nearby onto the hospital campus. So, you know, it'll be downstairs from the emergency room, but, um, you know, down the hall from the imaging and lab services mm -hmm. provided by uh, the hospital. So it's a, a really nice integration and takes some effort to plan and, and, and uh, coordinate across organizations, but we really believe that that's what the future is all about. And, 
Yeah, in uh, Champlain and Plattsburgh are also good examples. Mm -hmm. We um, have a practice uh, serving about 6,000 patients in Champlain and, and part of that building, um, there are ancillary services lab and imaging provided by uh, CVPH here in Plattsburgh. Uh, the building we have here in Plattsburgh, Plattsburgh Family Health, um, has been open since February and has enrolled uh, over 5, 000, almost 5,000 patients hmm. uh, in 11 months. And part of the strength of that building is that um, you know it is very closely situated with imaging and other specialty services that CVPH provides. So it's a great synergy across organizations. And we've done this too as well in Glens Falls. So lots and lots of background planning uh, that goes into these kind of uh, facilities, but, but they are absolutely the product of relationships that we have across organizations. And the one in Plattsburgh, your health center here has been open almost a year now. Yeah. And you mentioned almost 5,000 patients. Was that a surprise that, that you've had that sort of response? Yeah, that, this was the first practice we built um, without a patient panel ready to sort of move into it and, and um, a large patient panel. So we um, really built this from the ground up. And, um, and the, you know, the, the, the most intimidating part was um, trying to uh, recruit eno uh, enough providers. So uh, today we have six physicians and five APCs, which um, advanced practice clinicians uh, uh, who are PAs and uh, nurse practitioners um, staffing that building, and they've, they've been able to uh, meet the needs of uh, almost 5,000 patients in 11 months. So that was a, a real surprise for us. We're, we're certainly using the building uh, to its capacity, and, and we still have some room to grow there, but it definitely reflects um, that there's a population of people that, that have uh, needs and are struggling for access to care. Uh, lot, lots of times I think folks end up in the emergency room or maybe even forego care uh, because they just don't have the access that they need. So we, we uh, have met that need and we, we accept all insurances um, uh, for the most part and, and if someone does not have insurance, we um, can uh, uh, supplement that and make sure that we never turn anyone away, which is really uh, kind of a core element of who we are. Being able to receive federal funds, does that give you an advantage that other healthcare providers and hospitals don't necessarily have? The federal support that we get um, is absolutely essential for um, making sure that we can see um, any patient that walks through the door uh, uh, and even those without any insurance. So that federal designation really allows us to do that. And based on the number of patients you've seen, this clearly shows there is a, a, a need for primary care. Oh yeah, we, we um, I, I'm certainly biased as a family physician, but I um, absolutely believe that, that primary care is, is uh, a very cost effective way of addressing um, people's healthcare needs before they evolve into things that are a lot more costly. Um, um, but also um, uh, really negatively impact people's lives um, if they develop a condition that we could have prevented um, early on. Hospitals are struggling right now financially. Uh, we're seeing consolidation in, in the industry. We're seeing networks forming among healthcare providers. How is it that you folks are, are, are thriving and, and being able to yeah. expand at a time other uh, providers, hospitals are, are having yeah. such a tough time? Yeah, there's massive shifts in healthcare right now, and and um, you know more and more of the the work um, and more and more of the care that's being provided is is in the outpatient settings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we happen to do outpatient work, um, and that that is our niche. So that you know, I think a lot of the the much broader changes that are happening really um, line up well with our our business model and approach. Um, yeah, we don't um, own and operate a lot of really fancy equipment, um, so you know, some of our costs are a lot less. Um, but, but you know, we absolutely have to have um, hospital partners and hospitals in the region that are sustainable, and you know, we really need emergency rooms and operating rooms. You've just uh, won uh, a $1 million grant from the Charles R. Wood Foundation to develop a network of mobile vans to head out into very rural right. areas. Yeah. Um, 
Where are you with that project? Is that yeah. in very early stages? And, and could this be something that uh, you may look at next, that if you don't have enough patients for brick and mortar yeah. locations for health exactly. centers, do you yeah. go the mobile route? So more and more we've realized that, especially rural communities, um, have a population of patients that traveling uh, even 20 or 30 minutes is 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 a lot to ask. Um, so, you know, our thought is uh, to try to bring uh, the care uh, closer to home for for these folks. And some of these towns and locations are um, probably too small to kind of um, justify a, a, a large building like we're that we've built in Plattsburgh or mm -hmm. or uh, Champlain or even Ticonderoga. Um, so, yeah. Uh, um, you know, through the generosity of the, the Wood uh, Foundation, we have this amazing opportunity to uh, really bring mobile uh, care to small communities. And so 2020 is really our planning year. We, we're um, going to try to purchase the first of our mobile units, which are large. They're, I think, about 38 feet long. Mm. Um, so they'll look a lot like a regular exam room on the inside. Um, and then the, the real trick is to, you know, figure out where, where can we have the most impact with this resource and, you know, which communities are the most in need. Uh, once we get one under our belt, we, we plan to, um, you know, get a second one. So hopefully we can cover, you know, a big part of the Adirondacks and surrounding communities uh, with, with those two large units I and mean, possibly some smaller units in the future. Do you see this possibly being a, a model for future rural health care? Is yeah. it working in other parts of the country? Not only for um, very rural communities, but also some you know, urban communities that have um, folks that um, have transportation issues and, um, and other issues. So, you know, there are some good examples um, across the country. And when we deliver on it, it'll, it'll really impact um, lots of families, I think.